Let's talk about what Koreatown is first. Koreatown is a perfect box just west of downtown Los Angeles that spans an area roughly 2.7 square miles. As one can tell from the name, Koreatown has a rich history with roots stemming from Korean immigrants that used to mainly inhabit the area. The city still has a lot of Korean influence, but today is actually much more demographically diverse. From an urban planning perspective, Koreatown, unlike much of Los Angeles, is comprised of way more multifamily homes and low-density apartments. Organizationally, Koreatown can be thought of in five main sections. There is Olympic Boulevard, 8th Street, Wilshire and 6th Street kind of go together, Western Avenue, and what I call North Koreatown. Not to knock on North Koreatown, but the neighborhood does get less interesting as you go north of 6th Street. So let's jump down to the street level and check out some of these streets, starting off with Olympic Boulevard. I have a love-hate relationship with Olympic Boulevard. For one, I totally hate major boulevards in Los Angeles. There's always six-lane roads that really have no business being around homes and pedestrian environments. Drivers are driving really fast, and it just doesn't feel safe. That being said, some of my favorite shops and my local grocery store are on Olympic. I also routinely take the 28 to get around Los Angeles, so I do view this boulevard as my area of transportation in and out of Koreatown. Over the last year, Olympic has had several major apartment developments. In an attempt to add housing options to Los Angeles, a lot of these apartment complexes have gone up. Although, if I'm being honest, it's hard for me to call these high-density housing. The apartment complexes are massive. Each apartment inside them has roughly three times the square feet as a Manhattan or most New York City apartments. This is less of a high-density housing neighborhood and more of an American mall with homes inside it. But in general, these apartments are moving the city in the right direction. Most are multi-use, so they have restaurants and shops on the first floor. They also double as parking garages. While I have mixed feelings about these, which I will go to at the end of this video, but Koreatown is infamous for having a parking problem. So maybe these will help a little bit. Maybe. I'm approaching the corner of Olympic and Western. I'm gonna head north from there and then we're gonna loop back around and I'm gonna go through a more historic part of Koreatown. There's gonna be older apartments there and I think it's gonna be super interesting to see how different these apartments are from the new ones being built. So the apartments in this area are so, so different from one another. We're gonna see some apartments that use very clear Spanish architectural elements. We're gonna see some that use like very European classical elements, which even I was surprised to see in Koreatown. And then as I've shown, we're gonna see a bunch of these uh, more modern millennial composite buildings. Starting off with the Versailles building, this is a luxury apartment that pretends to be a castle. The building has medieval inspired turrets on its corners. It has an ornate castle roofing on the top. Overall, it's very fantastical and sort of hard to take seriously. I think what's so bizarre about Koreatown architecture is that it's almost a museum of architecture. A lot of cities throughout the world tend to have some sort of architectural theme in different regions of their city but not, not in Koreatown. It's just whatever feels right wherever they want. For example, on this corner, we have another fantastical inspired apartment. It uses many themes that you would see on a castle. Right next door, however, you have the Serrano Tower. This building borrows more modern art deco themes. And then almost less than a hundred feet away, there are these very Germanic looking houses. And right across the street, we see another different style. These are definitely something. So I'm gonna head to 8th Street now. And 8th Street is that part of Koreatown that I would say has seen better days. And I'll show you what I mean when, I, when we get over there. Okay. 
And 8th Street is one of those streets that I think about when I say that there are some very undervalued parts of Koreatown. This street could clearly be very profitable, yet it seems like a lot of the shops are either run down, not used, or closed almost all the time. I'm not one to discourage people from taking a day off, but it feels like being closed at lunchtime on a Saturday would be unwise for most businesses. But a lot of the west side of 8th Street is being developed right now as well. Just in the last year, a lot of these new millennial style apartments just opened up and people are just starting to move in now. Okay, I'm gonna start heading up to Wilshire. But on Wilshire, we're gonna see Koreatown go from a residential area to more of a commercial office area. There is some shopping areas around Wilshire, but much like A Street, I would also argue that Wilshire is very underutilized in that respect. So for the most part, it's gonna feel like a lot of offices. A lot of these new apartments have bike racks, which is great. But considering that bike thefts are one of the most common crimes in Los Angeles, I don't really know what people expect is gonna happen with these. Let's just say I've never seen an apartment building with bike racks outside of it in Los Angeles actually being used to store bikes. I wouldn't trust it. Wilshire is another area of Koreatown that I enjoy, but I believe could be so much more. The intersections have some nice restaurants, and the entire street is supported by a subway system. However, Wilshire is not enjoyable to walk along. With a six-lane road adjacent to me, I frequently have to put on my noise-canceling headphones to avoid getting a headache. Much like a lot of Koreatown, the street is a mix of new and old. There are older brick apartments along the street, but several more colorful, more modern apartments as well. some more unused bike racks. I've shown in this video many complete apartments, but I want to emphasize Koreatown is in the middle of a huge construction spur. The city is dotted by new developments at various stages. Real estate developers with deep pockets are sinking a lot of money into Koreatown. There are some pros and cons to this. Koreatown does feel as though it has been the victim of urban neglect over the last decade. There are a lot of great shops and the area is generally famous for its food but it does feel as though the property and sales taxes Koreatown is generating are not going back into the neighborhood. Sidewalks and roads are in a bad state. Lots of shops are closed down and poorly maintained. So the fact that developers are sinking money does lead me to be optimistic in the future of Koreatown. However, I'm still not convinced that the Los Angeles government will properly return the taxes this area generates. The massive apartment construction leads me to another concern. Los Angeles is already famous for its horrendous traffic in and out of its downtown areas. Olympic Boulevard, which I showed earlier, gets backed up every day during rush hour. Each of these apartments are bringing with them an entire parking garage. This means now we will have a much higher concentration of cars coming in and out of the same area. Normally a city could offset this by building more public transit. Olympic would be such a perfect street for light rail or streetcars. However, there are no plans to expand transit in this region aside from the Wilshire line. But this only improves traffic in one direction. The city needs to start thinking about transit running north and south. Otherwise, these apartments are bringing many future problems. But I would love to hear your thoughts on the development of Koreatown. Or if you think I missed something, leave a comment below. And as always, remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and want to see me explore more areas of Los Angeles. Thanks for watching.